If you are looking for seats and finding your spot, we have an overflow room, which is in the passageway to my left, your right. We have two overflow rooms that are open right now. If you have an empty seat next to us, because we have a full house, would you do your neighbor a favor and raise your hand, just indicating where that is? That's incredible. (laughs) Beautiful. I think we are great. Church family, would you do me a huge favor and can we bless and thank our worship team for leading us in the glory this morning. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna have a good morning. We already are having a great morning. You can lower your hands if you haven't already. We have the privilege of having some amongst us who are first-time visitors in our environment. If you are a first-time visitor, would you give us a wave? And church family, can we honor them and bless them for joining us this morning? Beautiful. All across the room. I know we have a ton in our overflow and we are so grateful for those of us who are joining us online right now and are new. We are so blessed to have you. Make sure you jump into the chat and let us know where you're joining us from. This week in church news, it is action packed. I have one exciting thing to highlight for you. Next week, if you are joining us online, we have something called our community chats, and that will be a Zoom ahead of the service where you'll get to chat and connect with leaders in this environment, just as if you had come early to service like everyone in this room and chat and connect with all of our staff team. So you'll find more about that in our social media and our news. But without further ado, let us Q Church News. Happy Palm Sunday. My name is Michelle Thompson. And I'm Jenna. Here is this week's church news. Starting tomorrow, we're joining together with the global body of Christ and celebrating Holy Week. We'll gather for times of morning prayer from 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning and evening worship from 8 to 9 p.m. with the gathering on Friday being our Good Friday services. We will have services at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. And we'll also walk together through daily devotionals with our leaders, which will be emailed on the website. Go to Bethel.com slash Holy Week for all of the gatherings, details, and more. Join us at the Easter Carnival for a fun and creative day of connection at Enterprise Park on March 30th at 10 a.m. This free day will include games, activities, and a chance to win some prizes. Who doesn't love prizes? Come on. As a movement, we are in a profound season. Revival is here and more is coming. As we prepare for more, he is building in and through us what is needed for this next great outpouring. On April 11th, we'll have a live connect with some of our senior leadership team to discuss what the Lord is doing in this season in the body of Christ and as a movement. Head to Bethel.ws slash build legacy to find out more. Registration is required for this free event. Bethel Women, we are so excited to invite you to our Wonder Conference. Join us April 17th through the 19th to hear from special guests like Alex Seeley and Natalie Grant by going to Bethel.com slash events. If you're unable to join, we'd love to invite you to serve with us at the conference by going to Bethel.com slash serve. And I want to challenge you to invite a friend. A lot of women around the country are like, I didn't realize it was here. It's so much more fun when you're going with a friend. So send an invite out. That might be the Lord's confirmation that they've been waiting for. Thank you for being here with us, Bethel Church. If you missed any of these announcements, please find them at Bethel.com slash church news. We hope you have a great week. More happens in five minutes in the glory than five years outside. Do you understand that there are powers and principalities, forces of darkness that exist all around us? But what happens with a worshiping group of people? Those things become silenced and immobile.
Super cool. Well, you can sign up there by texting Reading to that number. If you wanna sign up and join us for those two nights of worship, uh, why don't you just take a screenshot of that or put the number in your phone real quick. We would love to have you there, not just to celebrate this one moment, but to celebrate what God has been doing in and through this house and this movement for so many generations. We're so privileged. Well, it is offering time. Can we, uh, we can be excited about that. It's offering time. That's great. You can be seated just for a second. Uh, last time I had people jump up to stand and I uh, had to tell Steve to sit and then Bill stood instead. So I lost that battle. Um, but I was just thinking as we take up today's offering, I was sitting on the front row with my three-year-old trying to put a rock in my ear and stick a sticker on my hand and um, just just had this overwhelming gratitude that we get to gather as believers. I, uh, I literally grew up in the church. Many times my grandmother I would, had me drawing on her tissues that came out of her bag because she was trying to keep me quiet in services. Uh, but I grew up loving coming to church. And I just had this feeling of like, we get to do this together every Sunday. And I feel so privileged and so honoured that we get to gather together. And so today as we give... We give because we get to be a family. We give because our family believes that we are called to do the work of God and not just to touch this room, but to touch the world. And we get to give because we are people that believe the presence of God transforms life, lives and the transformed life is what changes the world. And so why don't you stand with me today? We are gonna, um, we're gonna read offering reading number one. But what I'm gonna have us do at the end of offering reading number one, I'm gonna count to three and we're gonna lift up a shout of praise. I've been reading the Old Testament a lot lately and I've been seeing that breakthrough often comes when people do something before they see the breakthrough. In 2 Kings 3, they dug holes in the desert believing for water. Uh, Gideon's army, they made a big shout and they lit lanterns and somehow that told the enemy that they were gonna be vanquished by Gideon's army. Around Jericho, they walked seven times and on the seventh time they shouted and that was their victory. And today I believe as we give, we are declaring in faith, victory over our finances, victory over our homes, victory over our relationships, victory over the church and victory that Jesus Christ is on the move and He is doing a great work in and through us and on our behalf. Amen. Amen. So let's read this offering. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, gifts and rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we hold out our gifts right now? I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna make a shout, okay? Jesus, we thank You for Your goodness. God, we thank You that Your goodness is coming after us, that Your goodness isn't passive, Your goodness has momentum and Your goodness is turned towards those who love You. Lord, we pray today that as we sow and invest, that You would multiply this seed. God, I thank You that as seed goes into the ground, it will bear much fruit. And so today, God, we declare that this seed is gonna yield a harvest of 10, 100, 1,000 and a a hundred thousand fold. Lord, we bless this in the name of Jesus and we declare the breakthrough and the victory of Jesus in every life in this room and online today as we sow. In your name we pray this. And church on the count of three, let's lift up a hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Well, we're gonna pass the buckets and as we do, would you welcome up Pastor Bill? Thanks. Wow. A lot of shouts in here today. Yeah, it's Sunday, that's right. Today I want a biblical wife. What, I'm, what people think I mean is I want a wife who is passive and subservient. 
What I really mean is I want a wife who is totally willing to drive a tent peg into the tyrant's heads should the opportunity arise. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Old Testament story, that helps. That's a, that's a great definition of a biblical wife. And, and I'll tell you, most of the people in the body of Christ who scare me are women. I'm just telling you. They just absolutely scare me. And I know some. I think they carry a tent peg in their back pocket. You know, They're, they're just ready. <laughs> Amen, amen. I had, oh, here. In a kindergarten class, a teacher offers the kids $5 if they can name the most famous person who ever lived. Little Sean O'Sullivan said, St. Patrick. Teacher says, no, I'm sorry, Sean, that's not correct. Little Johnny Williams says, Abraham Lincoln. She says, no, Johnny, I'm afraid that's not the answer. Little David Goldberg said, Jesus Christ. The teacher says, that's right, David, you get $5. He comes up to collect the money and the teacher says, you know, David, being Jewish, I'm surprised you said Jesus. David replies, in my heart, I know it's Moses, but business is business. <laughs> I don't, is that legal to do that, that one? Is, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I'm sure I'll get some emails. All right, thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, Palm Sunday, wow. I've never... Uh, given a message on Palm Sunday about Palm Sunday, so I'm not going to date today either, except, <laughs> except we're going to read some scripture. I'll talk a few minutes and we're going to go into the subject that I have for today. <laughs> that's that's kind of sad, isn't it? Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 12. I want, I want to look at uh, this particular part of the story and then uh, we're going to move into... Uh, kind of an extension of the last time I talked. I talked a couple of weeks ago about remembering. The Lord says, don't forget my benefits. <clears throat> so I want to do a spin off from that. But John chapter 12, um, John's account of the triumphal entry of Jesus says the next day, a great multitude, verse 12, uh, next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, went out to meet him. They cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when they found a young donkey, when he found a, a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, fear not, O daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him. And that he had done these things to them. One of the most consistent things, this is a little off subject, a lot off subject actually, uh, but one of the most consistent things that you'll find about the prophetic in scripture is it's not understood until after it's fulfilled. It's, it's rarely, I don't know that it's ever given so that we can create charts of what's about to happen. I think it's supposed to be lodged in our hearts so that as things unfold, we realize, oh, he's in charge. Amen, Bill, good point. Verse 17. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pay you later. Verse 17. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, people also met him because they heard he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing one another. They're pointing at each other. It's so funny. They're turning on each other. They said among themselves, you are doing nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. It's such a lovely verse. Um, palm branches were, were a sign of victory in battle. And so when they laid palm branches out for Jesus to come into the city, they were walking, welcoming him as a victorious king. Kings, when they normally would enter a city, however, would ride on a war horse. I don't know how many of you have ever studied uh, war horses. It's fascinating. It's in the Minor Prophets. They talk about them. And war horses were unusual creatures in that they actually could smell and hear war, and they would run to battle. They were attracted to war. They actually could stand, for example, if the, if the owner was in this uh, place of conflict and they were standing next to a burning building, 
that burning building could actually burn some of the flesh on that horse and he would hold his position. They were so resolved and so focused in discipline. Incredible, incredible animals. Jesus came not just, not on a war horse, came on a donkey, but not just a donkey, came on a colt. Because this triumphant king came as the Prince of Peace. The battle never was between God and the devil. That's not a contest. The enemy has worked ever since people were created to tarnish what was made in his image. He sees the Father's delight in people and he wants to do anything to tarnish that joy through marking humanity with sin and distraction. Jesus comes into this city and they lay down palm branches to welcome a victorious king, and he's not yet died. It's, I, don't, I don't know what it all it means, except we know that he was triumphant in his lifestyle over sickness, over disease. We know over sin. He was tempted in all manner as we are, yet without sin. So he was victorious even before he died, but when he died, his victory was made available to all those made in his image that would put their faith in him. His victory became our victory. His victory was as the son of man because God needed no victory over the devil. It was as the son of man. The Bible calls him our elder brother. So he went ahead, obtained an inheritance for us so that everyone who would believe in him would step into the triumph and the victory of that triumphal entry. Psalms 24 says, lift up your heads, O you gates, that the king of glory might come in. In some ways, that prophetic picture of the Old Testament was realized in this triumphal entry because the people began to sing praises. Hosanna. They began to exalt him as the king of kings, as the Lord over all. And in this moment, God inhabits praise and this triumphant Jesus was about to put an end to the voice of the enemy and to sin and disease, to put an end to that voice by his own suffering. It's extraordinary what was accomplished in those days. And he did it with you in mind, with me in mind. John the Baptist is one of the great heroes of scripture. For me, I, I read of his life, uh, frequent, well, I, I go through the whole Bible all the time, but I, I like to take time to look at John the Baptist because of what Jesus had to say about him. So I want you to go to um, Matthew chapter 11. And we're gonna take just a moment there before we actually turn back to the portion of scripture I want, and it's in the Psalms, it's 119. But <clears throat> just go with me to Psalm, excuse me, to Matthew uh, chapter 11. And I want you to see a, a problem. First of all, Jesus later in Matthew 11 describes uh, John, John the Baptist, as the greatest of all Old Testament prophets. John was an Old Testament prophet. All of Jesus' miracles were also in the Old Testament. The New Testament doesn't start till the blood of Jesus is shed, the blood of the new covenant. So everything he did was to close out the Old Testament and initiate the nature of the new, the momentum, the focus, the priority of the new. Wow. So he announces John the Baptist as the greatest of all Old Testament prophets. But he did that after this particular experience where John takes a couple of his disciples and sends them to Jesus. John's got a problem. John's in prison. And he's about to die and he knows it. He prepared the way for the Messiah. Jesus' own job description in Isaiah 61 that Jesus prophesied over his own life in Luke chapter four was to release from prison. And John was facing the reality that he prepared the way for the one who releases from prison, but he's not being released. You can imagine the questions. Did I get it right? I had one assignment to prepare the way for the Messiah. And he's got this one overwhelming question. Did I get it right? Matthew 11, verse one. Came to pass 
when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities. When John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and he said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Now, John has already prophesied that Jesus was the Messiah. At Jesus' own baptism, before Jesus came to him, he pointed to Jesus and he said, behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's already made the proclamation. He already knows with every cell, every fiber of his being, this is him. But now he's in prison. How many of you ever, ever had circumstances that made you wonder about the bold confession you once made <laughs> previous? So he says, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, two disciples said to them, go tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. What did Dr. Jesus write out as his prescription? Testimonies. The profound nature of, testimony, of a testimony, I'm discovering my own journey. We've been, we've been talking this subject for decades. But the profound nature of, testimony, of a testimony is that it reveals the nature of God, it reveals the covenant of God with his people, and it gives us a personal invitation to encounter and know him in that way. It's a, it's a living invitation to an encounter. These stories of scripture, when, you've, when you read through Israel's history, you find the times in fact, I, I talked about this some a uh, couple of weeks ago. You find the times where Israel literally crashed and burned. And when you trace back what started it, is they forgot. They forgot what God had done. The testimony is not, is not a bunch of trivial stories that make us feel warm and fuzzy, that help us just feel good for the moment. They are revelations of the nature and covenant of God. They carry with it such compelling um, uh, evidence to the resurrection of Christ that it filters out all unimportant information. John is facing his final days. Jesus wants him to end well and he gives him a prescription. Here, the blind sea. John, you made this possible the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. It's almost like eyes are wandering all over the place and Jesus says, no, nope, focus right back here. You gotta end well, John. You gotta end well. The testimony reveals the nature of God and it actually, uh, I'll show you some verses in a minute, but it actually enhances, I don't know how this works, so let me just ramble and hopefully I'll say something. It, it actually enhances the intellectual capacity of an individual because it starts with the nature of God and all truth starts with the nature of God. Beauty exists because he's beautiful. Power exists because he's powerful. Love exists because he is love. All these things exist because of his own nature. Everything comes forth from him. Everything the enemy has done is to distort and pervert what God has made. It's not a war against God. He can't win that one. He just wants to embarrass by blemishing his creation that was made in his image. So testimonies reveal what he's like. I don't know how to do this yet. I, it's a huge part of my life, but I, I don't think I have it down yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for words here. I, I feel like there's something more deliberate I can do, we can do, to record and to 
meditate on our history with God. I was just at James River, great, great church uh, in uh, uh, Springfield, Missouri. Bethel was an Assembly of God church, proudly so. We, uh, I love the assemblies. Some of the finest people I've ever met in my life are assemblies. My mom is here today. Yay, my mom. <clears throat> 95 years young. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, so I'm very thankful for that heritage. And I, I had the privilege, again, I've been going back now fairly often to this great, great church, little little tiny home group of about 12,000 people. Actually, it's up to 13,000 they've been growing. And uh, I have such a wonderful time. And they, they are hosting a tremendous move of God. And they steward the testimony brilliantly. I'm, I, I'm, I get so encouraged. So we had this week, I was there for three nights, power, a week of power. And we had uh, hundreds of, of people healed. It was w- wonderful. But the, the one that just rocked me in some ways the most was a 14-year-old kid that stood up, gave testimony. It's a, uh, they have four campuses. So we got, the, the, their place is packed on a Wednesday night for a prayer meeting. 30, 35, 3,600 people, you know, people all over the, f- yeah, it's amazing. So the 14-year-old kid stands up and he gives a testimony how he felt electricity go through his brain and he is now no longer autistic. No longer autistic. God healed him. And just a pile of others. In fact, I have a video I was going to play, but it's 12 minutes long. And so I'll wait for a Sunday night. We can do the 12 minute version. So, but it's just so, so wonderful. So last night I was at one of our local restaurants and uh, uh, sitting there eating. And, and this young lady comes up to me, uh, ask, Are you Bill Johnson? I said, Yes, I am. She said, I knew that. But and then she, <laughs> she, she starts crying. She says, I was at your healing rooms today. And then she pulls out of her pocket hearing aids. Because she couldn't, she couldn't hear, and now she can hear perfectly. And she's she's standing at the table. And I was about six or eight of them in their group. They all ended up coming over to the table and giving them hugs and and cheering them on and honoring them for making the journey that they did, because that's what he's like. That's what he's like. I'll never forget the day I laid hands on. Little girl, about five years old, uh, born deaf. And uh, I prayed for her, nothing happened. Then I remembered I'd ministered to the mother earlier in the day, and she had some uh, spiritual issues. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe it got passed on. So I just prayed simply over her and broke that thing and then prayed again for her ears. I'll never forget the look. This little girl has never heard anything. And all of a sudden she goes... She starts looking all around because this room is filled with sound as sound begins to cascade into this little life. Because that's, that's what he's like. I remember here on a Sunday night, uh, somebody came up to me and said, a woman just got healed uh, of deafness. And I, I said, well, where is she? She was in the back over here. So I came running over to her and, and talked, wanted to talk to her to find out what had happened, not realizing she's never heard a word before. She doesn't know what words are. Never heard a sound. No sound. No sound sound ever. And I realized she doesn't know what I'm doing. (laughs) And a family member was there, began to sign, began to explain the story, how her ears opened up right back over here. And she kept pointing to speakers that were up in the ceiling. And the family began to work with her to learn to speak because she had never heard words or speak words. That week, she began to speak and speak in full sentences, but her first word out of her mouth was Jesus, which is a real good start. So she learned who did it. And uh, right, right back over there. It reminds me of one of our young men was down at the mall and saw this man with a very serious limp and uh, walked up and asked if he could pray and family members with him. And he didn't respond, but the family member said yes. So he prayed for him, come to find out he had a gunshot wound of all things and, uh, and was prayed for and was completely healed. So he's walking around and then he, our, our young man noticed this guy didn't say anything. So he asked the family, he said, can this man not speak? And they said, no, he's never spoken a word in his life. 
He said, well, can I pray for that? And the family, of course, you know, you're on a roll. Let's go for it, you know? <laughs> and so he prays for that. And the first word out of his mouth was Jesus. His tongue was loosed and he began to, began to speak. All of these are stories that reveal his nature. And maybe the one that rocks me the most was a 14-year-old girl from here went on an outreach with some of our teams down to San Francisco. And uh, there was an elderly gentleman sitting on a, on a curb on a street corner. And she just sat down next to him and began to share the love of Jesus with this very elderly man. And he opened up to the gospel and was born again. Such a wonderful display of God's mercy and power came upon this guy's life as he's literally just overwhelmed by the goodness of God as he meets Jesus. She gets up, she's praying, talking to other people. After a while, half an hour, hour later, she hears sirens. She follows the sirens and this man had passed away. The man that she just led to the Lord. It's just like him to do that. It's just like him. That's what he's like. That's what he's like to take a 14-year-old girl out of a small town of Reading, take down to San Francisco, sit next to this guy who's right at the end of his journey and introduce him to Jesus. That's what he's like. See, these stories reveal his nature. And John's assignment was to prepare the way for the Messiah, which he did so profoundly, so beautifully. But Jesus wanted him to end well. And he said, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. This week, I was, I sat uh, with a pastor and family at an evening meal after a service. And in walked a couple. And the uh, pastor's wife, uh, Debbie, said, this is the woman that Uncle Willie, her uncle was my grandfather, Wilhelm Morkin, and she referred to him as Uncle Willie. This is the woman that Uncle Willie raised. When she was a year old, she drowned. And my grandfather took her and prayed over her and she was raised from the dead. That's what he's like. Now she's a lot older. <laughs> and in a place of celebrating the kindness and the goodness of the Lord. That's what he's like. Every story reveals him and potentially our life, our journey. I want you to look at some passages with me out of, uh, we gotta do this quickly. So uh, out of Psalms 119, and then I'm gonna take you to Psalm 78 and I'll see if we can do this quickly. Psalms 119. Don't worry, we're not going to read the whole thing. It is the longest in the Bible. I have a little sauna, and I like getting into my sauna, and I, have, uh, I put on my phone a Bible app that reads the Bible to me. And, and it's a, it takes about a whole sauna session to get through Psalms 119. So I learned to push play and sit there. It's got a speaker system in there. And, oh, sweat for Jesus. All right. <laughs> Psalms 119. My grandmother used to quote this scripture to me. Uh, verse, uh, verse 11, Psalms 119. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Uh, verse 9, how can a young man keep his way pure and clean by taking heed according to the word? She used to quote those scriptures to me. Now I understand why. Verse uh, 14, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. Think about this. How is it that a testimony can compare to a million-dollar check? A testimony has the potential of marking your eternal destiny because it introduces us to God and to the nature that can and must be explored. Our faith will only explore where we have understanding of his goodness and the testimony reveals his goodness. Verse 31 I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. 
I will run the course of your commandments for you shall enlarge my heart. I don't know if you've ever prayed this prayer. It's in the scripture a few times. Enlarge my heart. One of the places, enlarge my heart that I might fear your name. The heart is, is the place that faith comes from. The heart is the place where relationship with God is developed. I want a big heart because I want to experience more of a big God. I want large faith to flow in and through me. So I need the enlarging in my heart. And he's declaring here that testimonies have an effect on the size of our hearts. Okay, let me put it this way. You're making me work real hard today. That's okay. All three services have been the same so far. So um, I never fault a person for the size of their brain, but the size of their heart is their responsibility. <laughs> okay, I meant well. I meant well. I really did. Verse 36, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Now, the Bible often makes comparisons between uh, this, this concept, this idea, and this concept. Whenever there's a comparison, it's because they're interrelated, even though they oftentimes, especially in Proverbs, don't seem to be connected at all. Here he says, incline my ear, make me receptive to the good news of your testimonies and not to covetousness. What is he saying? Testimonies help to refine values to where we're inspired to healthy desires and wrong desires are killed. Testimonies help to reveal to us the nature of God that gives us permission to dream, but it also shows what dreams are illegal. This testimony. Verse 46, I will speak your testimony also before kings and will not be ashamed. I will speak your testimonies before kings and not be ashamed. I don't know how this works, but somehow being mindful of the supernatural activities of God raises your place of influence where you speak to people that are outside your normal circle of friends. Why? Because God can trust you with influence because you're speaking of his nature. You're speaking of his history with humanity. Verse um, 79, let those who fear you turn to me, those who know your testimonies. Those who fear you turn to me, those who know your testimonies. Somehow testimonies increase favor with man. Yep. Yep, it is true. I'll give you one more and then we'll go to Psalm 78. Verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Think, just think with me here. I have more understanding than my teachers. David's making this proclamation. I've got more understanding. I, he's not being arrogant. He's saying, look at the effect the testimony has had on my mind. My capacity to perceive reality, my capacity to be, be able to use insight in constructive, positive ways has been dramatically increased because, and he traces it back to the testimony. Whatever is true is true because it's found in the nature of God. All right, Psalm 78, we'll do this quickly, I promise. You guys all right? Verse five says, uh, establish a testimony in Jacob. They are to make them known to their children. The generation to come might know them the children who would be born, that they would arise and declare them to their children. So what do we have? We have a picture of three generations. Tell the testament to this generation, to tell it to this generation, to tell it to this generation. All right. That they may set their hope in God. What does that say? A generation without hope is a generation without testimonies. It's not a light matter. It's not like, oh, 
let's tell another story as, you know, story time around the fireplace and we just forget about it later. These are weighty revelations of the nature of God that carry with it a compelling invitation. We must know God in this way. And he says, multiple generations are actually affected in their eternal destiny by the measure of testimony, the influence of testimony in their thinking in their lives. Verse 9 says, the children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant with God. They refused to walk in his law. They forgot his works and the wonders which he had uh, shown them. When they forgot the works, the testimonies, when they forgot the testimonies, they became cowardly and were not able to face the war they were born for. You remember David, it says, on a t- at a time when kings went out to war, he was on his rooftop, not in war, and it fell into a horrible sin. When we don't face the war we were born for, we face situations we have no grace for. And now we have the children of Ephraim, they're trained for battle, they're assigned for battle, they're gifted in battle. And again, Old Testament concept of war was concerning spiritual war in the New Testament. So we're not warring against people. It's about spiritual powers of darkness. So here's this picture. It says, they are, they are equipped for triumph, trained for victory, but they turn back. And the reason they turn back is they forgot. They did not hold seriously as the great treasure of their heart, the testimony of God. One more is uh, verse 40. It says, how often they provoked him in the wilderness. They grieved him in the desert. Yet again and again, they tempted God, limited the Holy One of Israel. They didn't remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zone. What is, it, what is he saying? When they forgot the testimony, they no longer had boundaries for their relationship with God, and they actually moved into a place where they wanted to compel God to do evil on their behalf. They lost their bearings. They lost their sense of clarity. They lost their sense of of absolutes. This is how we approach God. This is what he values. And when they lost sight of the boundary set by testimony, they wandered carelessly and they actually provoked God when they were designed to have a relationship where they would co-labor and see his work expressed in the earth to reveal his nature to all humanity. But they forfeited their opportunity because they forgot. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I, I may just talk about this all summer long. I don't know. I'm, right, right now, I don't feel like changing the subject. As I'm, I'm basically talking to me. Because I, I, honestly, I feel like there's 2.0, testimony 2.0 coming. That the Lord is going to give us this prophetic clarity. Think about this. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There is such a prophetic mantle release through the simple stories of God's redemptive work. I want to keep going to restaurants and having people come up to me with hearing aids in their hands (laughs) or crutches or wheelchairs or something, you know. I remember one of the folks that visited us some time ago, they, they, uh, they said goodbye to all their relatives. They were from another country. They got in a wheelchair. Doctors didn't think they could make the trip, but they, they made it. Checked into one of the hotels. And um, as they're leaving the lobby that morning, the clerk behind the counter said, oh, where are you guys off to today? They said, well, we're going to church. And they said, well, where, where are you going? They said, Bethel. He said, oh, the place where people go to get healed. And they were curious. They said, they, they knew that because they were going to the healing rooms or Sunday service or something. And they said, uh, what do you mean? Because they, they wanted to get the story. And, and the gal said, well, last week, <laughs> last week, somebody left here in a wheelchair. They came home pushing the wheelchair. So that, those are the stories you want to hear. 
These miracles testify of his grace. They do not testify of our significance. This is the normal Christian life. It is not for, either, either it's not for any special person or we're all special and we qualify. However you want to work that in, I don't care. But it, it is not the testimony of our significance. It is, it is the hour of the revelation of the nature of God and it happens through stories. And uh, Psalms 119 verse 111 that I didn't read said uh, his testimonies are our inheritance forever. So the full record of anything God has ever done in, in the lives of people is your personal possession. It's not just what I've experienced. It's not just what you've experienced. But the whole gamut of God's interactions with people, we inherit the stories. It's important. It equips our thinking. It, 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 it sets our mind in a way to receive the impressions of the Lord of the miracle he now wants to perform. The things that are happening around the world with our teams, we send them to places that we, you know, we don't tell them we send them to a hard place. We, we don't let them know. We, we, you know, we get told all the time, is, Oh, this place is the graveyard of missionaries. Nobody makes it here. Oh, we don't tell our teams that. As far as they know, it's heaven on earth there. And so we don't let them know it's hard till they get back. And then it's too late. They already know. Honestly, we've just, we've just seen, you know, people come out of strokes, resurrections, all kinds of stuff. And it's, and it's, it's, it's not just the obvious physical healings. It's the restoration of broken hearts. It's the healing of marriages. It's, it's the fractured minds that get healed. God just restores people's thinking. It's what salvation means. There's a good chance there could be somebody here this morning, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And it would be horrible for you to be sit here all morning long with this crowd of crazy people and not come to know personally what it's like to be forgiven of sin, what it's like to be adopted, brought into God's family, what it's like for the Holy Spirit, the wonderful comforter of heaven to come and to dwell in you. If there's anybody in this room that would just say, Bill, I don't want to leave the building until I know I have peace with God, that I know what it is to receive Christ as a master, as a Lord, as a Savior. If that's you, I just want you to put a hand up. By doing that, you're just saying, Bill, I don't want to leave till I know, till I know this that you've spoken of. Put your hands up high because I'm going to take just a moment. Make sure everybody has opportunity to surrender to this wonderful Jesus. All right. I'm going to assume you're all in, um, but we've got a banner up here. We'll have a team down here ready to pray for anyone who wants prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand, then I'll pray for you. You still alive? Yeah, good. That's all. It's, it's better when you're alive. <clears throat> we attract what we value. We attract what we value. For example, if you value gossip, you will attract gossip at work. I heard, I saw a wonderful meme the other day. It said, it said if you're fasting and still gossiping, go ahead and eat. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, don't bother skipping meals. It's not working, yeah. But if you value testimony, you'll attract them. There are certain people that like off-color jokes, they attract them. In any workplace, you'll see they attract what they value. So I'm praying right now that a standard gets set in every one of our hearts to hear the stories of God's redemptive work, that we would become filled and impregnated with the revelation of God's nature through stories. We welcome that. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come even now and establish deep in our hearts testimony 2.0 for us as a church family. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hold your places if you would. Tom will come and wrap it up.
So good. Powerful. Last night, um, uh, one of our team, Jordan, he was there in the Dominican Republic. He said, last night, a little girl was at our event. We met her back when she came in January. Sweetest little girl. Her and her sister were both born deaf and mute. Last night, both their ears opened, and the whole family decided to follow Christ. <laughs> Woo! That happened last night. So good. Hey, minister team, if you can make your way forward, we would love to pray for anybody here who needs a miracle. This is a day for deaf ears to open. Bill's got all those testimonies about deaf ears. Last night, two little girls, deaf ears opened. So if you need healing, this is the day to get in on this one, man. And so, um, you know, just I remember a couple, a few months ago, I don't remember when, how long ago. I'm up here, and I got a word of knowledge that somebody here had a right, right or left hip, I can't remember, that their hip was operated on, and they still had residual pain. It didn't completely fix the problem. I said, who is that? And it was a guy standing right here. We prayed for him, and he was going up and down the stairs. No pain. Got totally healed in the moment. So I just come in faith in these moments. Like, Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> Let's go. Amen. If you need a miracle in your body, healing for anything at all, we're here to pray for you. It's a, it's a, it's a moment. This is a moment. Is anybody here battling cancer or have a tumor? We just want to see that dissolve. Just dealt with today in Jesus' name. So God bless you guys. Don't forget to come back tonight. It's going to be a powerful service. Come with expectation on the Lord, and God is going to move in power. So bless y'all. Have a good day. Hello, Bethel family. So good to be with you. We actually just want to take a moment for those of you online. What a powerful message from Bill. I just such an incredible uh, exhortation for us to remember the goodness of God. But I'm aware that some of you watching may not know the goodness of God for your own life. Maybe you're still feeling stuck in sin. Maybe you're feeling stuck in cycles. Maybe you don't know the love of Jesus. And um, yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Check, check, check. Can you hear me? Let's see. Can you guys hear? Maybe just let us know in the chat if you can hear what we're saying. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. <laughs> Well, I was just saying, I'm not sure what, what we heard. Apparently we had a mic issue. But after Pastor Bill's message about the goodness of God, I just wanted to jump in and invite you. Uh, if anyone's w listening today, watching online, maybe you've backslidden, maybe you've left the Lord, or maybe you've just never heard of the love of Jesus or accept him, accepted Him as your Savior. I wanna invite you today, if that is you, to just put in the chat, I want to know Jesus. And um, as, you, as we do that, I just wanna release over all of you. Maybe for those of you that uh, want to write and chat, I want to know Jesus. Maybe some of you know Jesus, but there's still a hunger to remember the goodness. I was thinking of Psalm 103 that says, I will not forget your goodness, your benefits, that you heal our sickness and, you, uh, and He meets us with a crown of compassion. And I just want to declare as people are writing in the chat right now, for those of you that are, are asking for healing, you're asking for breakthrough, right now in the name of Jesus, we just declare the breakthrough of the Lord Jesus that you would not just uh, step into remembrance this week, but you would also step into uh, the goodness of the Lord, that you would bring to your memory His goodness, His benefits, that He heals our sickness and He redeems us with a crown of compassion. And we just release that right now over you that are online, that you would know the crown of compassion that the Lord places on your head, that you would step into the hope of Jesus and that you would know His benefits. I see someone just is praying that they, they will be free from sin. Um, if that is you today, uh, maybe you've turned to Jesus, but you don't know the freedom from sin. Right now in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would bring um, an end, Lord, right now to cycles of, of stuckness where people feel stuck in sin, stuck in shame. Lord, we release your healing. And God, for those that are looking to meet with Jesus right now, Jesus, we ask that you would come and meet with those who are crying out for you as a Savior, who say they want to know you, maybe people who are even watching back right now, Jesus, maybe those of you that are wanting freedom from a cycle of sin, just put your hands out in front of you. Jesus, we invite 
your goodness, the power of the gospel, the power of the cross that broke us free from shame. And we release your blood, Jesus, over those who want freedom, over those who wanna know you as a savior. Would you come, Lord, bring your salvation, bring your hope, bring your peace and bring your freedom. We declare cycles of sin, cycles of shame, cycles of despair end today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just keep hearing the word I'm pursuing. And I feel like maybe you have thought like you are running after God and He is so distant and it's so hard to get close to Him and you need to do so many things in order to get close to Him and get near to Him. But I hear Him say over and over, I'm the one who is pursuing. I'm the one who died for you. I'm the one who is pursuing you. He's been pursuing you your entire life. And I just want you to yield. And Lord, I just want to come against any wrong mindset right now that is saying that God is distant and hard to please. And we break that off in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are there to reveal that God is the one who is pursuing, that He is the one who wants His bride. And so I release this revelation right now and ask for freedom for hearts right now to just turn and yield to His pursuing of you. Amen. We receive that as well. I was just, um, as, as uh, we were just sharing, I was thinking of Bill's prayer about the Lord enlarging our hearts. And I'm seeing some comments, people wanting a heart to love the Lord with more depth. Um, and then also just the desire for freedom, for healing. And I feel like right now the Holy Spirit is inviting us to pray a prayer for the Lord to enlarge our hearts that we might carry more of the Lord. A lot of the message this morning was about, um, about us remembering the goodness of God. And I actually believe the testimony of Jesus says in Revelation 19.10 is the spirit of prophecy and that as the Lord expands our heart that we would be able to carry more of His goodness. We would be able to carry more in remembrance of what He has done. And I believe it's gonna give us hope for impossibility. It's gonna give us faith for moments of breakthrough. And so I just wanna pray that right now. I feel like the Lord is wanting to extend the 10 pegs of our heart that we could carry His goodness. So right now, Lord Jesus, we just ask God that You would enlarge the 10 pegs of our heart, that You would in expand our capacity, God, to carry Your nature, Your goodness, and to bring to remembrance, Lord, all that You have done. That Lord, in these moments where we're needing healing, where we're needing miracles, that we would pick up the authority of Jesus and begin to speak. I saw someone asking for prayer for their granddaughter from James River Church. I saw other people asking for the salvation of their family. And I really believe the Lord is equipping us with weapons of warfare, which is the testimony of Jesus. That is the spirit of prophecy that this message today is to equip us uh, to receive, yes, but also to pick up our own weapons of warfare and declare over our family members, over our circumstances, the goodness of God. Like in Psalm 27, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so Lord, we just ask Lord, that You would expand our hearts capacity to know You, to love You and to carry the breakthrough of Jesus to release over these circumstances. And we just release that breakthrough right now. We release it in the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah, specifically, you know, I'm, I'm just reminded that we had so many testimonies about the opening of ears. Yes, amen. So, I just feel like specifically for the opening of ears, we have heard so many testimonies and I just want to declare that over everyone who's just hearing issues, we declare yes, right you, now the power of Jesus over you. We release the spirit of Ooh, the, uh, the testimony really that is prophesying that you are going to hear, you are going to hear, He's going to restore everything in Jesus name. So we speak right now to every here that is not functioning right, we say right now, pop up. In Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Father. We thank you for your breakthrough. We thank you for open ears. Open ears right now. All deafness to be released right now and for full, complete restoration of healing. In the name of Jesus, we also pray. I just see Sharon is asking for opening of her spiritual ears. Lord, right now, I thank you, God, that you are opening physical ears, but you're also opening our ears to hear your voice, God. I thank you, Lord, that we will be a generation that have eyes that will see in the Spirit, ears that will hear your voice, and a heart that will perceive you, God, that we will be like those in Emmaus that would know the burning of our hearts, but we would recognize, God, we would recognize your voice in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus. 
Well, it has been so wonderful to be with you. It's so wonderful to, to see. I, I hear someone saying buzzing in the ear. If you have any testimonies right now of your ears open, maybe ringing in your ears, stopping, um, maybe even, I just feel like even tightness in the jaw are opening as we prayed. If any, if you have any breakthrough right now, I just would love you to put it in the chat so we can see uh, for those of you that are actually stepping in. If, any, if you have received healing, maybe not in yours, anywhere else, please put it in the chat. We would love to see. Nicole, I'm so excited for this coming week. Yes, uh, too. that we're going to have our online church join us. Maybe you could just remind us what's happening this coming week for, for those that maybe didn't get to hear about it. Yes, we are so happy that we're opening up Zoom prayers next week, every day from 7 to 8. Please sign up to Bethel TV. It's completely free and you will be able to receive all details for that. And we will just love the ways to connect with you. We feel so close to our international online family and we're just so happy to see you in these chats and in this prayer time to connect with you. And then also on Good Friday, um, the evening service, 6 p.m., we hope to see all of you there. Amen. Well, I'm just looking to see if we have any testimonies. Yes. I'm just seeing a lot of people releasing healing and breakthrough over each other. Um, other people seeing visions of hard shells breaking off of hearts. So we just receive that right now. Thank you for, for championing one another. I just love watching these chats as you guys begin to pray for one another and release the testimony of Jesus as you prophesy over one another. And I just wanna tell you, we love you so much. It's such a privilege when I get to travel and we get to meet our online family. We know that you are standing with us in faith, that you're joining with us in the mandate on earth as it is in heaven. And so I just thank you for joining us. We love you. We're so excited to chase after what the Lord is doing doing with you. We bless you this week and we look forward to being with you in this coming week as we uh, head into Easter. Yes. Have a wonderful week. Yes. Bless you guys.